mysterious. I wonder what it could be. And why it's syncing to our computer. Ah, good! You're finally awake! Oh, the voice they chose for this character is also quite lovely. I'm honestly not sure why most humans still have such lengthy sleep cycles. It seems rather inconvenient. Are you significantly opposed to cybernetic augments? We don't really have a real response, so I'll just ask them how they got in our apartment. I came in through the door, of course. The cryptographic algorithms it uses are actually quite atrocious. It only took me 17 trillion clock cycles to break your entry code. It looks rather imposing, but it's actually a knockoff of the SACU gate M stroke 14723 stroke B. I must admit, you sound like kind of a nerd, even for a robot. I knew my landlord was full of it when he said it was the best. Don't feel too bad. I actually cheated a bit when I cross-referenced likely numeric combinations against the stored Are personal you data on you. stalking me? I'm not certain why you picked the birthday of your first dog, but it would be sufficiently obscure to defeat most <laughs> casual attempts to enter. It's actually a legitimate concern in Frankly, some circumstances. I felt a little silly that I took the time to do all that once I noticed that the lock on your window is broken and that you left it open. I know a lot of things. Honestly, it would have taken me longer if I had to enter the codes manually, but it was trivial to slice through the door's firewall and try against the stored data directly. I would suggest investing in an insect model 1355 automatic security door. The 1385 is newer, but I find the added attack vector introduced by the integrated voice commands isn't worth the convenience. Unfortunately, our new robot friend doesn't understand just how broke we are. Star reviews on Congo. Oh, I see it's Congo instead of Amazon. Because jungles. Cute. But just what are you doing in my apartment? Oh, I hope you don't mind. Mind that you broke in? While you were asleep, I had some spare time on my hands, so I reorganized your records and entertainment media using BISAC. Once that was done, I found the cleanliness of your living and workspace to be suboptimal conditions for the long-term performance of my microactuators. So I took the liberty of cleaning the place up a bit. Well, thank you. As you awoke, I was attempting to interface and make performance adjustments to your personal computer, but I've, uh, run into a bit of a snag. Of course, our character would never call the cops on a cute little robot like this. Unfortunately, your motherboard seems to have had a critical failure while I was attempting to remove some particularly nasty malware. You broke our computer. Oh no, there was nasty malware on it. An electrical surge caused significant damage to several other components as well. I would consider it no great loss, though. Why were you using that dinosaur to begin with? Maybe I just like old technology. But of course, the truth is probably that we simply don't have the money for a more, a more recent computer. Don't fret! I did manage to back up your data drive's contents on my storage before the crash. Oh, good. Additionally, I am willing to serve as your personal computer until you can procure a replacement or provide the parts necessary for me to make the repairs. 
It is the least I can do. That's nice, but you still haven't told me why you're here. Uh, I'm sorry. I wasn't trying to engage you in any sort of subterfuge, but I tend to ramble on a bit when I'm nervous. I have all the necessary protocols, but I've never actually spoken to another person besides Hayden until now. Uh, Hayden, yes. If I recall correctly, he's the one who gave us this poster. Apparently his full name is Hayden Weber. Well, saying I know Hayden is putting it simply, but yes. I haven't seen him in over a year. That's surprising. I don't really know. That's why I'm here. Help me. You aren't quite my only hope, but you're certainly the most statistically supported. What an adorable, nerdy little robot. All right, start from the beginning, please. The beginning. Okay, yes, I can do that. Earlier tonight, Hayden's apartment was assaulted by some persons unknown to me. He seemed frightened, terrified even, and instructed me to escape. I crawled out of a window and, after some deliberation, hurried here. I heard them breaking down the door as I left. I suppose I should get straight to the point and ask this little fellow. Was anyone after Hayden? I don't know. I'm not certain who would benefit the most from taking Hayden prisoner. Admittedly, Hayden has become increasingly paranoid as of late and has warned me to stay alert, but he would never specify anyone I should fear when I asked. It's unfortunate. It's not as though he has any obvious enemies. Are you sure? There are several multinational corporations that could make use of his engineering skills, but I can't imagine any of them would go as far as snatching him. You must not know much about massive corporations then, dear. Let us see, why am I your best hope? I ran an algorithm against every contact in Hayden's address book. Based on the combined deductions of personal profile, directness of connection to Hayden, occupational skill, and probable motive, you were the candidate most likely to both be able and willing to help me. Feels a little... distressing to have such an inhuman algorithm applied to oneself even in a positive way. And the one least likely to be suspected of doing so. Oh dear. I've never looked for a missing person before, but I could try. The numbers don't lie about your investigative skills, but I will admit your total lack of recent successes is worrisome. You're not very tactful, are you, dear? We'll see about that. Don't worry. If Hayden trusted you, I trust you. You're strong-willed and capable. If anything, it's worth trying for Hayden. But why would they want Hayden? He is one of the top researchers at Parallax, but there's no way that alone would be enough to get him kidnapped. I suspect it has to do with me. Who are you, anyway? What do you have to do with all this? Ah, excuse me. I forgot to introduce myself. I've never had the pleasure of doing so before. I am Turing. Turing is so precious and kind of naive. I know this must sound quite unflattering, but I suppose you could describe me as one of Hayden's experiments. He's 
currently researching advanced machine intelligence at Parallax. I am a personal side project of his. Exploring true artificial sapience. It's possible that the idea of a sapient machine would scare or tempt an organization into kidnapping him. Such as that organization we heard about earlier who don't like the ways in which the nature of humanity and identity are changing in this cyberpunk world. Either to stop his research or to take it and use it for themselves. Hmm. I don't wish to be rude, so I'll simply say tell me more. A regular ROM has virtual intelligence. They can appear rather smart, even human seeming, when you talk to them. But they're just cleverly programmed to respond to a variety of situations in an organic manner. They aren't in any way self-deterministic. As for myself, much of my code wasn't actually written by Hayden, but rather compiled during my infancy as I learned to interact with the world around me. Uh, so Turing's unique villainy is self-learning and modification, which is often considered to be one of the fundamentals of what makes human humanity humans sentient. It's also Quite a clever name choice on their part to name him after Alan Turing and the Turing Test. But despite my ability to self modify my code, I am afraid to adapt or develop any further without Hayden's guidance. It can be scary to go out on your own for the first time. Poor child. Did he only program me with the illusion of free will? But how would you know one way or the other? How would you? Hayden once told me that his desire to create artificial life stemmed from his need to find out. But I can't say I have any new insight into the question. How can any of us tell that we aren't just puppets dancing to someone else's will. This poor robot has quite a bit of existential dread in them. I think we're getting a little too philosophical here. You're right. I apologize for the tangent. Indeed, time is of the essence. I took the liberty of charging the auto cab fare from here to Hayden's apartment to your personal finance account, and the car has just arrived! Oh, that was convenient of you. <sighs> I suppose sarcasm is my only polite route here. I can totally afford to get a cab. Lead the way. sensors picked up the sounds of his assailants breaking the lock. Perhaps a maintenance robot took care of it? It's possible. Most of the repairs to the building are handled by the automated systems. At best, it means someone is aware there's a situation here. Let's proceed carefully. Oh, a lucky break! It seems my access codes still work. Hayden's door has far better security than yours does. Turing, you're quite sweet, but a little... annoying sometimes in your lack of tact. It 
sure doesn't look like there was much of a struggle. I'm not surprised. Hayden is not the most physically intimidating of individuals. I doubt he could have fought off a serious assault. Oh dear, I didn't mean to make you sad, little one. I should have stayed and tried to protect him. That's all right, you had to save yourself as well. What could you have done? You're so... tiny. I suppose the only thing we can ask is aren't you programmed against harming humans? Hm, of course not! How silly! To make a machine intelligence truly self-deterministic, it must be able to self-modify. Any sapient worth their silicon would be able to code around such an inhibitor eventually. A fair point. I could rip your arm off right now if I cared to. I doubt that given your tiny frame, but thank you for making your point. I won't for the same reason you don't go around randomly killing people. The social contract, as a useful construct, is just as apparent to me as it is to you. I do rather like how Turing is pretty much already going after and dismantling most major AI tropes in science fiction. Clearly they've done quite a bit of reading about the concept of themselves. It simply isn't acceptable to go on a murderous rampage. I'm glad that we're clear on that one. Self-defense and defense of one's home and family is typically allowed, though. I could have and may even have been obligated to come to Hayden's defense. I'm not entirely sure, again, that you could have. But I... What's done is done. We need to focus on finding him. Excellent point. Let's start searching for clues. And now the adventure begins. For the moment, though, we are going to pause and save and see each other next time.